Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today I'm going to try and get as many projects as I can absolutely finished and installed into Brick Nottingham so I can do a really thorough tour next week. One of the things that divides my audience but definitely attracts probably the most new subscribers is an occasional tour video going through the entire city of Brick Nottingham showing some of the finer details and all the layers and all the rest of it that we all love so well. Uh, but I haven't done one for quite a long time. Uh, I went through a period of doing one every 50 videos uh, at the beginning to make sure it was kind of regular uh, documentation of progress made. And sometimes it was quite a long distance between two of those. So we moved it to every 25. But having said that, the last one I've done uh, recently is actually early May 2021. And at the moment we're in, well, mid-December. So it's been over seven months since I've done one and it's high time I did another. Now, with that in mind, uh, I want to get as many sort of half done projects actually into the city properly installed rather than having them all just sort of laying around. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I haven't done one for so long. Things like the fairground looking in complete disarray. And I guess I'm just going to have to bite the bullet on that and really get uh, the tour done despite the fairground being only halfway there. And, you know, maybe that'll entice more people to stay anyway for uh, the rest of that journey. So, yeah, I'm well up for that. So today might be a bit of a <clears throat> hodgepodge of different things, uh, just getting them, as I say, absolutely finished. And the first one of those is my sushi restaurant and sumo uh, dojo. Uh, and it is looking already absolutely fantastic but as always you've come back with some really awesome suggestions and there's quite a few to reflect uh, now one of the main areas of contention this week was the top level we kind of got the sort of pagodary shaped christmas tree type thing but then it kind of just continues at the top and doesn't sort of go out uh, uh, in and then back out again so basically it was suggested that i should make this bit a little bit higher so i kind of didn't necessarily understand what that was talking about but I thought I'd go on to LDD and uh, try and do that and essentially I think you're right <laughs> and that's why I really love getting suggestions from all of you is because things that aren't necessarily obvious to me on first glance uh, make uh, much more sense when you've explained them to me and uh, I've, I've given them a quick go <laughs> and, uh, and proved, the, proved the, uh, uh, the theory. So one of the uh, suggestions that I received was put very simply that even just raising the whole thing up on a few stilts would really help with how it looked just to sort of raise it just that little bit higher and give the balance uh, the building a lot more balance so effectively that's all I've done just put some uh, additional bricks there to mount the same thing that I had on before just a little bit higher now I'm going to take off the uh, ninja assassin uh, and I can put him now in this new layer, sort of sub layer, and then put this on the top there. And I'm not going to push it down just in case things go absolutely flying. But there you go. There is the next bit sort of raised up that little bit more. And I think it's right because now we've got the black layer, red, black, red, black, rather than sort of a double black layer at the top. And I do think that looks a lot nicer. Now it does need some more detail around it but I'll give you your bedoying for that suggestion uh, and it just so happened I had two more of these dark green things uh, so I thought I would continue with the flaming torches that are on the floor below and then I built more of whatever these things are called to kind of decorate the edge just to break it up a bit so it didn't look so hollow so I've got some shorter ones for the sides oh that's just collapsed on me there we go so that can go there and then one on this side as well. And now, when that's pushed down properly, I think you'll agree that looks absolutely amazing. I mean, it looked amazing before, but now, <laughs> wow, I think it looks absolutely mega. So thanks very much for that. Uh, now, a very minor one that I also received was to change the little tips on the ends of these, which would have been red, to gold, just so we've got more sort of gold accents right on the tips. So I'm going to do that as well. So some of these uh, things are very structural and large changes, and other ones are a lot smaller. Oh, so you know who you are. I'm going to have to push that down when we stop this take. But thanks very much for your gold tip suggestion. And that looks absolutely amazing. 
Now, uh, I had received an idea to incorporate a sort of trap door for the ninja in the top there, but it really didn't work without interfering with the uh, layer below, so I haven't done that one. Uh, but the other area that really raised a lot of uh, interesting suggestions was the uh, dish use on the middle window here. Uh, lots of people did like it open because you could see through. Lots of people liked this one. I mean, this was definitely the most popular one. This was option three. Uh, but option two was also uh, very greatly appreciated. Uh, and a few suggestions were incredibly simple. And this is <laughs> this is what I love. Is, is, well, why not put two and three back to back so you can have th uh, three visible from the outside and two visible from the inside? I thought, wow, that is just so simple. I hadn't even thought of it. Isn't that weird? Um, so I thought I'd give that a go. Uh, but before I did, I went into LDD just to see if I could incorporate another floor that had the open window as well. Uh, and I think you'll see from this picture that whichever way around I did it, with the open window at the bottom or at the open window at the top, having kind of two round windows, one above the other, just, well, it just didn't really work. And the balance was nowhere near as good as we've got it now with this additional kind of empty raised floor. So yeah, really good. So those are the changes to the outside, but let's go and have a look at what I did with that dish on the inside. Alrighty then, this is one I'm not gonna be doing live in front of you on camera, and that's the inclusion of option two, this bionicle shield piece uh, as the backdrop to the sumo area. And wow, doesn't it look absolutely amazing? Uh, and the reason I'm not doing it uh, live on camera is just because, well, I've had to make quite a lot of structural changes to the roof, uh, holding up all the rest of the floors, uh, because um, it really needed a lot more space than I'd originally allowed when, well, it was an open window. And it isn't helped by the fact that it's got this sort of jagged sawtoothed edge, which means it really only can fit in one position even now. Uh, but it is held with a central Technic pin that goes all the way through to the dish on the outside and holds them both on the same point. But yeah, that just looks absolutely great. I think it is a very sort of Eastern looking pattern uh, with that red and black fitting our color scheme absolutely perfectly. So yeah, that is better than the weapons rack, even though I did really quite like that. Uh, so anyway, thank you very much for everyone who suggested that or something similar to that for the changes here, because that is greatly appreciated. <laughs> Uh, now, a few minor changes that we've done. Uh, we've added a uh, base for the fish tank that people wanted. I've changed one of the sumo wrestler's uh, kind of wraps or sort of <laughs> whatever you'd call those around his uh, midriff uh, to red from black, just so they're a bit different as well as their faces. I've kept the hair the same though. That was a really uh, good, simple one. I like that. Uh, one accessory that Master Wu needs is one of these fans because they kind of have a ceremonial fan when they're uh, refereeing. So I'll give him that. So that looks great. Uh, another thing they have is kind of a bucket full of salt, uh, which they kind of purify the arena with when they're fighting. So I'll put a shared one there. Uh, someone suggested doing a sort of minifigure scale bonsai tree. That's about the best I could come up with uh, using a twig piece and a minifigure hand in brown, but I'm not sure I really like it enough to include, actually. Uh, tell me if you can think of a better way of doing that. Obviously, if it gets to about this size, it's not really a bonsai tree anymore because that's the height of a minifigure, isn't it? So it really has to be a micro build. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to include that. Uh, and the other really major area that I got a lot of comments about was this arena. Uh, well, was it an arena, really? Uh, and I sort of said, well, it's probably not an arena because it should be round and all the rest of it. Uh, and maybe this is just some patterning inside uh, a rug or something like that or a mat. Uh, but I was encouraged to keep looking at it uh, and basically make it into uh, a ring. And given him, uh, that this is a facade building and that the back's been chopped off by a big guillotine and would continue on, we actually don't need a full circular ring in there because that could have been chopped in half as well. So maybe if I just replace this square mat with the beginnings of a round ring, so maybe sort of like a semicircle shape, then it would look a lot better. Uh, so that is what I'm going to try next. Right, so the new shape, I'm still gonna stick with tan, dark tan rather, but the new shape is gonna be that half circle, as I say. And I'm going to sort of have a rope, I suppose that's what it is, around the outside, marking the edges of the ring. 
Uh, and ideally, I think I would have done that in dark red because the pieces I'm going to use are not available in normal red. Um, but I don't have them because they've only been released in that color in probably one set. So essentially, uh, I'm going to use white for now and order some dark red ones to replace it with in the uh, longer term. So that is kind of the half circle, if you will. And you can just imagine that continuing out up to about here. So it's quite roomy, which is what it would be. Uh, and then just inset by one stud into that area, I'm gonna have that rope in white for now. There we go. And then it kind of gets chopped off the back, much like everything else. So we'd have a bigger roof cavity up there. We'd have probably another one of these sushi sort of uh, sections downstairs as well. And we'd have the rest of the ring up here or maybe some changing rooms or something like that. But I think that does look better, actually. I've tried it on LDD, not in real life, but uh, yeah, I think it looks better in real life as well. So now we can have uh, Master Wu standing up, which means I can add the rest of his sort of... Uh, uh, garment on the bottom there, his robe, and I can have him sort of waving his uh, fan around as well. Put the ceremonial salt near him in the middle on the back there. Am I going to be able to do that in there? I'm going to catapult it. I know it. No, no, I've done it. Uh, and then I can have the original sumo wrestlers inside the ring this time. Or, well, inside the pattern anyway and still have them leaning. And as somebody else pointed out, now they're a lot more brought towards us because they're in the center of the new ring and we can see them a lot better. And it's just a bit better spaced. Oh, wow. You see, this is what makes the perfect team. Me making some really original mocks and then you telling me how to make them even better. What a fantastic combination. Well, that definitely deserves a bedoying. Loving that. Uh, wow, the only thing now is to get this into Brick Nottingham. But before we do that, I just want to uh, complete another building, uh, which I think will go in the same area on the outline of that second standing hole. Wow, that looks good. Inside and out, I'm very excited to put this into Brick Nottingham and see how it looks. I think it'll be absolutely amazing. Uh, but... For now, I'm just going to pop it over there so we can finish off another building that has kind of been in the city, actually, but wasn't greatly received uh, as it was. It needed more work, essentially. So that's what we're doing today, finishing uh, projects, getting them in the city so everything looks absolutely fantastic for the tour video next week. Uh, and the building in question was the Honeyduke Sweet Shop that was part of 76388, the Hogsmeade Village visit. Uh, and... It didn't look exactly like this last time, but we did have uh, this uh, video series one uh, ice cream saxophonist with a new head sort of as the proprietor uh, on the step. Uh, but it essentially had all the snow removed from its roof. It's very pointed roof. Um, and that was about it. And it kind of looked a bit, well, ordinary, I suppose. Uh, I've also changed these bits to green, which I do quite like. Uh, but what most people suggested was that it needed to be a lot deeper because it was only about six studs deep. So basically, I've <laughs> pulled out pretty much all of my uh, medium nougat bricks and sand green to continue the color scheme that's going around the outside just to make it a little bit deeper. And you can see it looks a lot better spaced and a lot easier to see into and kind of enjoy as a result. And I'm hoping it'll look a lot more significant when it's in place. So that is that. Thanks for that suggestion. Uh, now, another thing that you'll see immediately that I've done, you probably saw as the first thing, <laughs> is that I've made the roof lift offable. Uh, and the reason why I've sort of left this bit behind is just for it to be very sort of strong and structural. It kind of is better that that's attached to the ground floor rather than coming up with uh, the rest because it's supported by these arch pieces very well. So yeah, that's why I've done that. So essentially, we've got uh, a very separate roof over here which also is a lot deeper, obviously, to match with the bit below. So that is a very complicated build in that I've basically made a hole in the middle of the floor so we can see into that shop a lot better and just had it that maybe you reach these extra boxes with a bit of a stepladder or something like that. So basically that goes on to duh, 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 the downstairs build, kind of like that. It takes a little bit of a, a jiggle 
and it isn't the strongest as you can see because of its silly shape but nonetheless when you do find the there we go resting position it fits on rather well now the one thing i also wanted to change was to make this very large uh, expanse of grey roof look a lot more interesting uh, and you can see I've started that off on the flat bit by putting lots of boiled sweets uh, in different colours they're all the colours I had really it'd be nice to get a bit more variation in that there's too much red at the moment but um, kind of as little sort of sweets just stuck on the roof for a sort of Willy Wonka feel uh, so yeah I think that looks really good but I didn't want to stop there so I basically went through all of my collection of pieces and bits and bobs that I buy as my hauls and all the rest of it to see what would work well to decorate an expanse of sweet shop roof uh, and wow I found quite a lot so one was a collectible minifigure of Uni Kitty, who I've got absolutely no purpose for. I got it as part of the um, Lego Movie 2 minifigure series, uh, and ever since I thought, no, I'm not including that in my city. Uh, but I thought, basically, it looked very sort of candy-ish, and maybe it's a brand of uh, candy or sweets. So uh, I thought I'd put that on one side of the roof. Now, because Uni Kitty is kind of made of bricks and is usually uh, completely sort of flat-sided, he wouldn't be connecting very well. So I've changed the neck uh, to make it one of these headlight bricks, basically, and supported with some clear bricks as well. So it kind of looks like that. In fact, I should probably swap these around, shouldn't I? So the neck's there, because I think the neck's supposed to be in the middle, is it? There we go. Does that look better? No, I think it was better the way I had it. Anyway, uh, that then gives me the other side of the headlight brick to attach it to... Oh, that's how it should be, isn't it? There we go. Uh, to attach it to the... Uh, roof line so I reckon that that can go like that at a jaunty angle and really brighten up that entire side yeah awesome uh, so then for this section I thought I'd use some of my dish pieces with the swirl on uh, and this white and red swirl has been in well loads of sets 15 sets uh, 6492 Hypno Cruiser from 1996 being one of them which is a very interesting set indeed with a time traveling feel so I thought that would be a lollipop and it would need a stick therefore so i've used this slightly older version of the stick just because it's slightly longer at six and a half studs rather than six studs uh to kind of come off again at a jaunty angle and this is where my roof disintegrates so i have to push very hard to get that on there we go and then i can put the lolly top bit over there and that works there we go and then i thought i'd have another lolly on the other side but that one would be this Maybe it's a licorice lolly or something like that, black and blue. Uh, and this one is from set 6496, Whirling Time Warper, which is another Time Cruiser set from 1997 this time, which is also very interesting. I mean, I reckon you could get some really good ideas from those sets. They're just so wacky. They include parts of every different persuasion all jumbled together. Absolutely crazy. Wouldn't mind trying a time machine one day. Um, so that brightens up that big surface as well so then the only one really left is this area uh, and a while back you may remember there was a uh, lego movie 2 set called uni kitty's sweetest friends ever 70822 uh, and as part of that there was kind of a chocolate bar character uh, and i well built my own really rather than getting that set i built uh, the uh chocolate bar bit removed the eyes off it and changed all of the packaging so it was purple uh, because in the uk purple packaging around chocolate means that it's cadbury's uh, which is well probably our most famous brand of chocolate so i am going to fit that at a jaunty angle onto there as well so now we've got lolly chocolate lolly uni kitty all around the outside boiled sweets as well and I'm even toying with the idea of having kind of uh, little cookie and cake pieces uh, kind of to make a little path up to it or something so it's really uh, a bit of a Hansel and Gretel theme as well but you'll have to tell me what you think of that I don't know if I'll do that today but that looks a lot brighter doesn't it and if we look into the back now we've got the lid on uh, you can see it's a lot easier to get into uh, you can see it a lot better with the light that comes in and it's much more substantial with that additional depth so i think that's been a real success you have to tell me what you think there's our proprietor and to aid him either in physical form or maybe actually just as little statues as part of that outside decor uh, i've got well the first of two video characters i hope uh, this one is called blueberry guitarist 
uh, as in bear and berry, sort of blended together. You can see he's got blueberries on the back. Uh, so the blueberry guitarist from video um, season one, but he's from one of the stage sets. He's from the 43111 Candy Castle stage. Uh, can kind of be flanking uh, one of these bay windows. And then when I get the video series two minifigure, which is the sort of pink uh, equivalent to this, the female one, then uh, I can have that on that side. Uh, and that one's called the Rasp berry uh, which is an awful pun so that's the yeah, dj raspberry uh so i'll have her there i think there'll be statues just sort of waving you in or even just sort of dummies looking dead forward sort of like that or something uh like that but it'll add a lot of color to the pavement sidewalk in front of it Right, so I've talked far too long already. Uh, so we've got two great buildings looking very awesome, bright and colourful. And I just really want to get both of them fully installed in the city. So when I do my tour next week, everything looks absolutely awesome. Okay, in the Lego room. And this area all looks all right, but the rest of it is a bit of a state with things sort of lying around and so on. But there, ba 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 is the sushi restaurant. And uh, I don't get too excited because I don't think that's where it's going to go because if we kind of look there, we need it to be, well, arguably even more to the left to fit next to the GBC factory. And then it's really going to run into this uh, monorail tram system. So I don't think that's going to work at all. And even where it is at the moment, the tram would definitely hit it. Uh, so yeah, that isn't right. So I kind of thought this might be the case because of all the weird sort of bits we've kind of got hanging off this building and its complicated roof. So I thought we might move the most moved building in Brick Nottingham, the arcade, which has probably had about six different locations so far, uh, move that again and have this beautiful restaurant kind of right up against the uh, subway entrance there behind the bus uh, with all of you on watching the development of the city. Uh, and... Yeah, I think that would look really good. And even though it's really tall, behind it, the ride is the carousel. And I don't think that would be completely hidden. And then we'll go back to kind of lower rise after that, between that and the GBC, which will give a bit of space for the tram line itself and allow us to see kind of through the gap, which would be here, uh, to see the Dodgems, which I think is probably the best and most exciting ride that I've done of the fairground, because we don't want all of that completely blocked from this viewing perspective. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Uh, and then that will kind of take it from there, kind of up to there. And then we should have enough for Honeydukes either on that side or definitely here somewhere as well. Uh, and that will mean for the tour video that we are, well, we're making the most of it, quite frankly. And then I just have to do some other jobs like pushing these together. And then after Monday's video, which will be fairground, I can tidy up all of this sort of detritus that is necessary for doing all of that work. Uh, anyway, one thing at a time, let's get both these buildings in. Now, I haven't put any of these in properly. I've kind of just dumped them on top so they won't be integrated at all. But it's the only way round that I can get all three into the space. Now, the benefit is that that does complete this street. Uh, which is a really good thing. <laughs> On the other hand, they are kind of rammed in a bit. Uh, they don't conflict with the tram line, but they are very close together. But then isn't that the case with everything in my city? And the subway entrance is a little overshadowed, but not too bad. Uh, and it's kind of good to have to look round things to see other things. I don't really mind that. I mean, if we look at that, that's incredibly uh, close there to GPC, pretty much touching uh, right in front of windows. Am I happy with that? I'm not sure. Uh, but you know, these are absolutely side by side. Uh, and these are side by side and so on. So it's not really uh, different from everywhere else in the city. Wow, what a view that is. Um, so yeah, right. I think I'm going to go back to the first standing hole with these sort of balanced in place and see how it looks from there. Well, do you know what? It's pretty crammed and perhaps pretty unrealistic, especially where the arcade is sort of in front of some windows. But I've got to say, I quite like it. Really, really jammed together, jammed in. I mean, we don't want to leave loads of space in between uh, buildings. A, because we'll get less stuff in and density is one of my design rules. Uh, but also because, well, it's more true to life in the UK. You know, we've lived on this island for so long. Uh, that absolutely every square inch of its space has been 
<laughs> co-opted for one use or another. So, yeah, I think that looks really good, actually. And we've got all the scenes outside each one. I think it will look good. Uh, well, we've got the ghost scene on the end. Uh, we can have that arch, well, we can try that arch uh, in front of the door there. We'll have all the sort of sweets and candy in front of that one. Uh, and then we've obviously got the uh, pinball wizard sort of scene to move uh, where the boy is being turned into a frog by his friend accidentally. So I can move that into that spare space of pavement. Uh, and then the two people that I move walking uh, to Comic-Con will just have to go on the other side of the road or something. But yeah, packed and stacked for sure. And we've got that window I was kind of describing. Because you think where that sort of bag of bits is, that's where the um, uh, dodgems or bumper cars is going to go. So we'll be able to see that very well. And you can still see the carousel. I suppose the one thing that we have lost is that we really can't see pretty much at all unless you really sort of lean over there, the second underground stop. And that is a bit of a shame because one of the views I really liked was kind of following the train between this stop uh, and that stop and be able to see it in both. But, you know, whatever we build there, that's going to have the same effect, I think. So, yeah, tell me what you think. But I think, at least for now and for Friday's, uh, next Friday's tour video, uh, I think I'm going to start embedding these in right now. Well, much like the uh, two steps forward, one step back progress we were making on Friday with the fairground, the same is true over here. Because in order to get this arcade into its position, I've had to make two quite big changes. Uh, the first one is to the stanchions for the uh, tram support, uh, tram line, which is now here and was here. So that's had to sort of be moved that way. Uh, with some changes on the underside here, uh, but more significantly, uh, to accommodate these slightly proud windows, we need to move the whole arcade building on its base plate that way by annoyingly one stud. So that means I'm having to take apart all this building and I'm going to move all of these rides, the tiles and absolutely everything, one stud uh, to our left and then it should all fit in perfectly. Oh, how annoying. Oh, that is all done now, all moved along, one whole stud. So you can see that is overlapping by one there. And there's a nice little gap there, which may not be incredibly realistic right up to those windows, but that's not really what I'm going for with my Lego City after all. Uh, and the stanchion is clear of the building, so that's good. So you'd think that'd be all all right, but no. Uh, the pattern of my pavement, which I go for this sort of long, short, long, short, uh, and then offset it for the next one, isn't right when we get to the new join. So I'm going to have to move all of these uh, tiles, two studs, that way. And before you ask, yes, it does matter. <laughs> well, one down, two to go. Uh, but that one's looking really good. Integrated as it is, right up close, no space wasted. And we've got all the scenes back. We've got the two walking to the Comic-Con on the left and the boy turning his friend into a frog on the right because he's stolen the staff, the magical staff of the wizard who is a pinball wizard and who's just celebrating his high score on the pinball. So yeah, that is looking really good. And that Space Invaders sign is really showing up against the sort of black edge of that table behind it. So yeah, great, two more to go. Two down and one to go. That one was a lot easier because I didn't have to really move anything <laughs> on its own base plate or something like that. Uh, it is kind of overshadowing the subway entrance, but that still works, that scene with all the ghosts escaping the haunted subway uh, and scaring the, um, what are they called, ghost hunters, hidden side guys, uh, because they're all coming from that haunted subway down there. Uh, so that's looking really good. One thing that doesn't really work is my sort of edging that I put as paving slabs just to hide the top of that wall. I'll probably just change that to some dark bluish grey tiles uh, and for now I have put on the small gate on the pavement on the front in front of the door. I kind of like it. I'm going to keep it for a bit and see if it annoys me uh, but I like that very much so that's looking great uh, and we've got two red and black buildings now. Uh, unfortunately the bright sweet shop will break them up uh, and then we've got the ninja there breaking the fourth wall <laughs> leaning over the facade which I think is quite funny actually. You've got to have uh, an exception to your rule. And the great news is that because he's right over here now, 
uh, I won't be knocking him off every two minutes because I thought when he was here, uh, I'd be working on the fairground and sort of hitting him. But uh, there, I think he's safe. Hey, that ring looks really good, doesn't it? Oh, I really like that. I'm glad we went round. Yeah, it's definitely better than that mat I had before. Thanks again for that one. Cool. And number three. In the middle there. Sufficiently out of the way of the tram line, I think, once the roof is on. But that's looking pretty good, I reckon. And it's much better being deeper, so it's not so recessed from the road. And I've got the proprietor on the doorstep with the one gummy bear that I have got. Uh, and I thought I'd have an attempt at that idea of kind of a road made out of candy or a sort of path or sweets. So I thought that might go kind of there. I've got rainbow tiles on as well. What do we think of that? I'm not sure. Probably could have a second go, but I haven't got a huge amount of time now. So um, do tell me how I can improve that if you have a good idea. I uh, quite like the rainbow though. Ho, 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 they're all in. <laughs> wow. Oh, I've waited so long to have this street completely filled. And now it is. Hospital, museum, GBC factory, arcade, sweet shop, and now our Japanese sushi restaurant. And the tram going in between them as well, looking absolutely fantastic. Wow. Well, I've kept all the scenes in place that we had before and loved. I'm actually really digging this uh, candy path up to the front door of the sweet shop. And it's definitely a lot better uh, being deeper, isn't it? And with all that stuff on the roof, it really draws the eye and separates these two red and black buildings. And I think the arcade may have found its final position now, uh, given that it is actually, well, well placed and uh, is low enough so we can see into the fairground, kind of like a window. Uh, but then this, what a wonderful building. And that top floor is the crown and glory. Underneath uh, is that dish as well. And I think all of your tips have definitely made the inside and out of that building much, much better. Uh, so thanks again for all of your amendments there. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, really looking forward to doing the tour. And I think you'll agree that what we've done today was very important, not just for the city, but for making that tour that we'll do next week uh, extra effective and brilliant at bringing people in. Now... Uh, one thing we have to decide for next time is which train I'm going to have running on my passenger line. So let me know if you've got a preference for the tour or one that you think will show off my city to its best. Uh, the choices are obviously the uh, Sheen and Zeppelin or Zeppelin train, which is very interesting and fast. Uh, but you may prefer the Flying Knotsman with all of its wonderful green carriages. It's just having a charge at the moment. <laughs> uh, or we can have the Fast White train or the Patreon train. I probably won't have two running at once just because, uh, well, that's a bit mayhem uh, for a tour video. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching. As always, it is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we will be... Uh, going to the fairground for another fairground for Monday and after that session I'll try and leave it in a fit state for the tour <laughs> then Wednesday we'll be doing a brick call as usual uh, and then well we'll be doing that big tour video that's way way overdue because I think we've had quite a lot of progress since the last one so until all of that thanks again uh, for all your help and um, see you next time see you